Miss King, we're just going to do that first. First one. Good evening, everybody. I hope everyone's had a good week so far and is ready to hear what the Lord has laid out for us tonight. We're going to start with a, it's kind of old song to me. I don't know if it will be to y'all, but it is to me. <clears throat> it's not really old. This is just one of those songs that uh, make me think of my childhood when I'd hear my mama sing it at church and stuff so grab your hymn book and turn to page 596 it's only got two verses so you got to sing loud okay <clears throat> Turn to sit down. <clears throat> oh, time on. Okay. All right. Good to see y'all in the Lord's house tonight. What a hot day it's been. Amen. It's so hot. I saw a funeral procession pulling through a Dairy Queen today. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, no it's, it is. It's been warm. I think it's been about the warmest day of the year so far, and that's saying something. But it is, praise the Lord, good enough that he gave us AC and we have a place we can meet where we don't have to meet in uncomfortable temperatures. So I'm thankful for that. Good to have you with us tonight. If you're visiting with us, make yourself right at home. I look around, I don't think I see any visitors, but if you call yourself a visitor, uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, glad you came tonight. Uh, way of announcements, just want to let everybody know just a few quick things. Um, tomorrow at 9 o'clock, if you... Haven't come out for the exercise class. I think they started off with, what, 14 people. A really good turnout for that. And if you like to participate in the exercise class, uh, that starts tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And uh, we'd love for you to come out and be a part of that. Uh, tonight, if you are interested in going into, uh, to the Mudcats uh, baseball game on July the 18th, if I, 15th, 15th. July 15th, uh, 
I can't hear. Don't I mean, you talk. I can't hear. My wife will tell you that. <laughs> but uh, so what? Amen. <laughs> But if you're interested in going to the baseball game, uh, if you are, please sign up tonight. Even if you don't think you're going to go, uh, if you change your mind and you don't go, that's fine. Just put your name on there. That way we can just go ahead and reserve out what number we think. Uh, I think the tickets are $9, $9. And if you bring uh, uh, supplies like for the home, uh, like cleaning supplies or things for you would use around the house to the children's home, uh, it would be of a great use. That, that's their big drive, so they collect these products and things like that. So uh, that will be on July 15th. Now, don't forget about Vacation Bible School. Uh, literally, it's just a few weeks away, and we're gearing up for it. And this Sunday afternoon at 5, there's going to be a VBS workers meeting. Uh, so if you're a part of Vacation Bible School uh, and it'd be great for you to be here at that meeting. Uh, there's going to be a lot of details and final things being set for that meeting. Uh, that same night at 6 o'clock, we'll be having our deacons meeting as well. So deacons, don't forget about that this Sunday night. And starting on uh, June the 17th, June 17th, July 17th, don't make me take my belt off now. <laughs> July 17th. That's a Sunday night, if I'm right, and I'm not always right, but the 17th. Uh, it's a Sunday night. That it, we're going to make that a special night. We've done this a few times already in the past. Uh, we're going to be decorating, uh, getting props made for Vacation Bible School. Uh, we'll be doing some painting, and we got a lot of things that we're going to have laid out, ready to go for anybody who can come help that night. We're going to begin that night at 5 o'clock, and uh, we'll, we'll have some ice cream and things like that, uh, light refreshments during that night as well. Uh, but love for you to come out and help, so wear some old clothes. You don't mind getting some paint on just in case. Uh, that'll be on the 17th. Now, the 18th and 19th. And then the 21st and 22nd, we're go that's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, we're doing from 3 to 9 o'clock each day a VBS set design. Where we're going to be putting these things into place, finishing out the products, and getting the church decorated for Vacation Bible School. And so this is an open invitation for anybody who would like to come. Now, if you can't be here at 3, that's completely fine. If you can be here at 5, come on. If it's... 7 o'clock, come on out. Whatever time you can come and help out, any little bit helps. Uh, so we would appreciate uh, anybody who can come out during that week. Now, we have that uh, on the church calendar that is uh, available on the tables back there. So feel free to grab one of those just in case you might forget. And don't forget about Give a Kid a Chance in August. Uh, we still got those sign-up sheets, and, and if you're interested in sponsoring a child, those envelopes are in the pew. Uh, I think it's $50 is to sponsor a child, but if you can't give $50, any bit you can, can give uh, will, will be helpful. And if you can't give it all, give prayer. We need pr plenty of prayer. Everybody needs to be praying regardless. Uh, let's pray for that to be a great event. Now, uh, y'all are in for a treat tonight, uh, Sister Tammy Langston and Brother Danny have brought uh, a mess of squash, zucchini, and cucumbers, and okra, and they're located right back there in the vestibule area, uh, so anybody who'd like to go get some of them after the service, you are more than welcome. All right, any other special announcements we need to call attention to? Thank you, sister. Yep, so uh, next Wednesday, the 13th, I think that's right, the 13th. Uh, we're going to be going to Yoder's Dutch Pantry. It's an Amish restaurant near Grifton. Uh, that is going towards the coast. Uh, we'll be leaving at 10.30 for anybody who would like to go. Space is limited to 25 passenger bus. Uh, so if anybody likes to ride a bus, be here at 10.30 as we pull out shortly thereafter. Uh, we're going to have lunch. And then afterwards, after we finish the meal, we're going to make another little short trip over uh, to the creamery. Uh, it's out there in the middle of nowhere, uh, but they have delicious ice cream, and it's well worth the trip. So we're inviting you to come and be a part of that. 
Uh, so that'll be next Wednesday, uh, leaving at 1030. Any other announcements? All right. Well, we want to go to the Lord tonight then in a time of prayer. And uh, Brother James does have the microphone. Uh, of course, let's continue to pray for those who have been on our list. Continue to pray for Brother Ray and Sister Dee Dee, uh, Brother Wayne and Sister Irene Brown. Uh, let's also continue to pray for Sister Linda, Betty Fleming. Uh, let's also pray uh, for... Uh, it just left me. Did I say, didn't I say Linda? I had one of those moments. It'll come back to me. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take your prayer request, and if it comes back to me, I'll announce it. Anybody over here on this side tonight? Sister Lois has one. Sir, I'd like to be remembered. I had 12 skin cancers worked on today, plus I had to have a biopsy on my right hand, and I'll know in two weeks so that I have more surgery. And please remember my son, Jamie, he goes Monday to have surgery on his neck to remove the growth that's back there. Okay. So I appreciate your prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord you're being able to be here with us tonight. Amen. Let's pray for rain. Yes. Definitely need that. Thank you. Um. Pray for my son's salvation. Um, he's back in overflow right now, but he was fighting me the whole way here. <laughs> okay, let's pray for that. Amen. Anyone else over here on this side? But Johnny has one. Let's pray for Dorothy Williamson. She has contracted COVID, as has her daughter, uh, Angie. But please remember them. Okay, let's pray for them. And pray for Sandy Nair, and she is back in the hospital. I got that message today. All right, anybody here in our center section tonight? Sister Gail and Tanya and Myra. Brother Eric, remember Deborah's mother. She had a heart valve replacement. Uh, today was a week ago, and they can't confirm she's either had a stroke or not had a stroke. But hopefully we're going to get her in rehab tomorrow. Okay, let's pray for her. Amen. Oh, okay. I'd just like everybody to remember Daniel. Um, he's in Tennessee right now. He's um, going to be coming back either Friday or Saturday, bringing Chelsea back home. I just pray for his safe travels and that his car will hold together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, I have specific requests for Jennifer. She went to the doctor today for blood work, and her white blood cells are really low. She's neutropenic. Um, what that means is she can't go anywhere. Um, she can't wash dishes. She can't do anything for her family right now because if she gets a scrape or a cut or anything, it'll put her in the hospital. So I want to be specific about our prayers that her white blood cell count will be increased. Um, they gave her a bone marrow shot today to increase that. So she goes back Monday. So I pray that that will help um, and that it'll be stable or either increased and she will not have to go to the hospital because they can't confirm it or not right now. Okay, let's pray for that specifically tonight. Amen. Sister Meyer, you had one. Mine's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only important people. Okay. I have a um, friend from high school who has two sons. One just came home from the hospital. He's got a long road of recovery, but it was there was a drug situation with that. And her other son had to go the same day that one was coming home. Her other son went to the hospital because he had overdosed on her pain medicine for her cancer. There's a lot going on in that family and um, a lot that the Lord needs to touch in that family. And I'd just like to have that family remembered. Amen. Amen. Anyone else here in our center section? Okay. How about over here on this side? Tonight? Anybody have one? Brother Kenny has one. I have a, a family friend. Uh, she lives in Stovall and we found out um, 
day before yesterday that she's had a stroke. Uh, she lost her husband in April with cancer, so she lives by herself. So I um, appreciate if you would have some prayers for her. She asked me to specifically um, send prayers for her, so I need y'all to have them pray for her. Amen. Amen. First of all, since we keep hearing all these uh, alerts, uh, let's pray for safety. I think the alerts are saying that we got danger of real heavy floods uh, right now coming on. Uh, my sister also tested on one of the rapid COVID tests today, positive, uh, my sister Nancy. And uh, she's supposed to emerge from tomorrow up to Troy and be marked in the eleventh here. Uh, I want, want to give the Lord praise. Uh, if nothing happens, I went to chapel here yesterday and I think I made my last trip up there unless something. Amen. If something don't come back, you can go home, you know. But right now, uh, the Lord's been good, and uh, I'm maybe we got through this journey. But I've got some issues still, but we're not concerned about it. Amen. Uh, just still being tough with every issue. Thank you. Amen. And let's pray for David Barber. Many of you know now that Brother David has been accepted as pastor over at Watson's Grove, I believe is the name of the church, near Kenley. And uh, pray for that ministry and pray for that church's growth. And uh, that that would be uh, a, great, uh, uh, a great tool that the Lord can use there. If you have tonight an unspoken request that's on your heart, you want to give to the Lord by the raise of hand. Amen. Brother James. Uh, definitely keep still uh, pray for me and Carson and Ricky as we leave Saturday morning going on our mission trip to Mexico that we'll have uh, good weather and good good uh, witnessing and safe travels. Amen. And also um, our secretary was telling me today that she had some uh, MRI done I think Friday maybe. Anyway she had some issues with her kidney and I know she was she worried about that thing all day long talking about it so um, and then I still like remember one of our police officers that was in the bad wreck, motorcycle wreck he's, uh, he's doing okay um, he's probably going to lose his job and career over it because some issue that was involved in it. But um, that's, I like him to be remembered. And also, uh, I went by the funeral home earlier in Goldsboro. One of our other police officer, his uh, mother-in-law passed away, Miss Edgerton. I like that him to be remembered. Okay. Yes, ma'am. With the weather coming, Marcia's just getting off of work in Goldsboro. She's got to drive home, so I appreciate it. Pray for her safety and driving. You know, Mama's nerve is always torque about that kind of thing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's pray for all those who are traveling. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to ask Brother, uh, Brother Jason Mazzell. Brother, would you tonight lead us in this prayer? Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you give us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come and just uh, get away from the busyness of the day and, and learn about you and spend fellowship and worship in you. We have so many requests tonight, Lord. We, you know each one and you know the needs and, and uh, you know how uh, each one needs to be met, Lord. We just ask that your will be done in each situation. We pray for the weather and the safety for the traveling and, and uh, just we definitely need some rain. So, Lord, just bring that rain and, and uh, just pray that you keep everyone safe. Be with the pastor as he brings the message tonight. I pray that we will just uh, get something that we can use and apply to our lives. We thank you for all that you do. Thank you, brother. All right, if you would take the Word of God and turn to Revelation chapter 17. Now, I have uh, listed on the, the slide presentation that we're going to be trying to go through verses 8 through 13, but I really don't think we're going to make it all the way. <laughs> After reviewing it and thinking about all of what we want to try to say out of this, out of this study, uh, there's just a lot to cover, but we're going to do our best what we can. So let's go ahead and read those verses to kind of get a, a familiarity with what we're looking at tonight. Beginning with verse 8, the Bible says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. 
And the beast that that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast." Now, I'm going to tell you, folks, when I read this, a lot of times I feel just inadequate to come and preach some of this stuff to you or teach it to you. But we're going to do our best to go through these verses tonight. And let's, put some, let's remember some standout points from where we've already studied to kind of help set the tone. First off, we have to remember John is in the Spirit. Most of the things that he is seeing here are symbolic of things that are going to be happen, happening physically on the earth. Uh, the woman that we have already talked about earlier on in our studies is a spiritual symbol. She is a false religion. She is also the agenda of the Antichrist. And she is also a literally controlling city. Uh, the woman, of course, is on a scarlet beast. Now, this beast is what we're going to be kind of reflecting on tonight as we're going to be learning about some of the heads and horns uh, but this beast is under her control. Uh, she influences the direction of where this beast is going. Uh, and she's doing uh, a lot of other things as well, not just controlling the beast, but she's also influencing others. She's enticing the people of this world uh, with her seductiveness, uh, with uh, so many other things that are alluring to man. And so the angel here has been telling John what this means. He's giving an explanation to John of the things that he has been seeing. And he's giving him the details, the meaning. And again, even then, as we look at this, we have to remember uh, that the book of Revelation is written for John's generation, so to speak, that it was written for the churches of that time. And so there's a lot of things that John talks about that those people are going to understand to a degree a little bit better than what we may understand it. Not to say that we can't get a good grasp of this book either. So let's look first with verse 8. Now if you'll click that first slide, brother. And we talked a little bit about this last week. And this was with the, Ant the Antichrist. Uh, here in verse 8, the, it, John records what the angel is saying. He's talking about this beast. The beast, of course, is the Antichrist. Uh, he is uh, the one with uh, uh, this fierceness. And, and what we see here is that the angel describes to John the stages of the Antichrist. Now, the stages of the Antichrist that we learn is that first stage one, he comes in with power. He comes out of basically nowhere uh, and assumes power and control of the many nations of the world. He ascends to this power, and he does not do it initially with war. He doesn't do it initially with, uh, uh, with uh, fights or military might. He is doing it with his political savviness. Remember, he's very much like when we saw in the book of Daniel and Tychus Epiphanes, who was able to gain a lot of control by doing political maneuvering. So when the Antichrist comes onto the scene, most likely this individual will do that with political savviness. Now, stage two of the Antichrist is as we see the seven-year tribulation period beginning. When you get to the three-and-a-half-year mark, we then find that the Antichrist, who has now completed the temple, and now steps before all the world to de declare to them that he is God, is going to suffer a fatal wound. Now, the Bible described it as a sword, but we know that this is, could be indi indicating some type of weapon. could be a gun, or it could be some kind of personal close assassination attempt uh, that comes and, and seemingly claims his life. But in, later on, as he is laying there and the world is mourning for him, he has this miraculous resurrection. Now, his uh, original spirit has left, 
But the new spirit that comes within him is nothing more than the full spirit of Satan possessing the body. And so this is stage two, and this also leads to stage three, where this Bible told us that he ascended out of the pit, and this is that full possession by the devil himself. And now we talk about stage four, when it talks about here in the scripture where he will go into perdition. This is talking again about him being cast into the lake of fire. Now, we're going to talk about the different segments of hell as we get a little bit further into the book of Revelation. But we have to remember there is hell. Uh, there is another place called Tartarus. And then there's also a place called the Lake of Fire. And these are different locations. And uh, we're going to learn more about them as we go forth. And so this is what we see being described here in verse 8. Now, it also talks about in these verses that there's also these followers of the beast. You can hit that next slide. And these followers are these people who have been left behind in this apocalyptic world that has been flipped upside down with the vast disappearance of the church. We believe that there's going to be a rapture that occurs before all of these events take place where we as Christians who follow Christ will be taken out of the world. But there are going to be many people who do remain, and some of those people are going to become followers of the Antichrist. These are people who are going to uh, follow him because of the power he presents. Listen, the Antichrist is going to be able to do some magnificent things, not just with the physical things of the world, but he is going to be able to display miraculous things that man cannot describe or understand. He's going to have this miracle-working power. Now, the Bible here talks about these people uh, who are following him. And he says here, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now, don't let that verse confuse you. There are some who would argue now that this confirms predestination. That God already chose who was going to be saved and who was going to be damned. Now, listen, God does not choose who is going to be damned. An individual chooses that. God presents the opportunity to all men that they may be saved. So everybody has that chance, has that opportunity. And so here we see that there are people who choose not to follow Christ, and when they do not follow Christ, their name is never recorded in this book. Well, one might look at this and say, well, it says here whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Again, this is just a reading uh, error that many people are guilty of. Listen, the book existed at the beginning of the world. I believe personally that that book didn't have any names in it at that point. But as the world has gone forth, names are being recorded in it. So the book existed from the very foundation of the world, but the names are being recorded in it as they profess their faith. And so this verse really does not uh, confirm predestination. It's about a matter of how you look at it, perspective. And so we have to remember that there is an opportunity for every single person who's existed to follow Christ. Now, people who uh, have had this opportunity before the tribulation, before the rapture, before the tribulation period begins and the Antichrist comes in, those people, a lot of them come to church. A lot of them have heard the Bible preached to them. They've had somebody come knock on their door or somebody tell them at work. They've heard it. They've had an opportunity to accept the Lord. But for whatever reason, they did not accept it. They denied it, and they chose not to become a Christian. The tribulation period comes in. Do those people get saved during that time, or are they bound for hell? When I look at the Scripture, brothers and sisters, I believe people like that 
are going to be bound for hell because they had the opportunity. They had the choice and they refused it then. Now, they're not going to be given another choice. The Bible talks about that God will send a strong delusion that they would believe a lie. Now, there are people in this world today who have not heard the truth, have not been given the opportunity to come to know Christ. They're not Christians. They have not put their faith in the Lord, but they have never had a true opportunity. The Lord's going to give everybody an opportunity. And some of these people, I believe, during this time are going to come and accept Jesus Christ. We learn there's going to be a vast amount of people, a multitude, that come before the Lord during this time who stand before Him. So we see this being a, uh, uh, an opportunity. But here's the warning to all of us here tonight. If we know that we're not saved, that we know that we are not right with the Lord, we need to get that right as soon as possible. Uh, don't be left behind. Even if what I say is in error, you don't want to be living during these times regardless. And so we see here that these, there's many people who follow and they look at the beast. And look at what this verse says towards the end. It says, when they behold the beast, they behold him. Now, that word really has strong implication in this verse because when they behold him, they see him as God. When you behold God, you're like, wow, this is God. But when these people, they're beholding the Antichrist, and they look to him as their God. So, in essence, they have sold their soul to the devil. I mean, if we were to give it some type of meaning, this is really what's happened here. They've given over their soul to the devil. Now, we come to verse 9. And we see that the angel begins to talk a little bit more about what, he, what we have seen here in this verse. Now, if you'll click the next slide, we see here that here is the mind which hath, uh, hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, hopefully, uh, this won't take the whole 30 minutes to cover this verse. But what we see here is that John has witnessed in the spiritual sense, not where we can see with our physical eyes. Don't think during the time of Revelation there's going to be some mysterious woman that the world's going to be able to see sitting literally on some mountains. That's not what it's implying here. But John sees spiritually on the spiritual side that there is a woman who is seated upon seven mountains. Now, we're going to look at three views on this. The first, we're going to look at it literally. I remember how many times have I told you this, and I think it's probably in your head now. Take the Bible literally unless there is reason that it gives to take it symbolically. Now, we know that this chapter has a lot of symbolism in it. But if we take what we see here literally, there are, we look back to, uh, to ancient times, and we look back specifically to a city that was set on seven hills. Now, there is a city that is set on seven hills, and this would suggest what John is seeing then is a symbolic picture of Rome. Uh, click that next slide, brother. Rome, of course, was the governing body of the world during John's day. Okay, uh, Everybody hated Rome for the most part. Rome had asserted their will, their dominance all over society, and many nations and people had to be obedient to them. Now, Rome was situated right there in Italy, and it's sitting literally on seven mountains. And if you'll click that uh, next slide, these are those seven hills, so to speak, that the Bible refers to uh, or possibly refers to. Uh, so, Rome being located there, you can see on this illustration these seven hills, and you can kind of get the mindset what John is possibly seeing. Rome was an evil city to a degree. Uh, yes, there might have been times where there was repentance and uh, they tried to change the world for Christianity, but for the most part, it really was a wicked pagan city uh, that... 
affluence the world with its ideology, its religion, and things like that. And so you can kind of see how Rome can be viewed as, in John's eyes, as Babylon. Now remember, even when John is uh, now writing the book of Revelation, Babylon is pretty much destroyed. It had been conquered. Babylon, the ancient Babylon of that time, was no more. And so what John sees as a Babylon then is, in his eyes, possibly Rome. Here's that city that is causing all of this influence all over society. Now, we see here on this picture the different names for these hills. Uh, the Quirinal Hill, the Viminal Hill, the Capitoline Hill, the Esquiline Hill, the Palatine Hill, the uh, Salian Hill, and the Avitine Hill. And so Rome, of course, was looked at in John's day as this hated place. And so you can almost see here is this wicked city, this Babylon that this woman sits upon, this Roman society who sits upon these seven heads or seven hills. Now, we know if we go back in the book of Revelation to chapter 13 and look at verse 1 that this was even referenced in that the Antichrist would be associated with this, that he would come out of this. Well, we know that Rome today uh, has a little place right there at it called Vatican City, and we talked a little bit about this last week. You can hit that next slide. Uh, the Vatican City, of course, is the headquarters for Roman Catholicism, and Roman Catholicism uh, has a very twisted view of the Scripture and its approach to God. Uh, it has distorted the true message of Christ and made it based off uh, man's uh, laws and, and traditions. And so it's really gotten off center. And so we see today that there is, uh, of course, the Roman Catholics are based out of that. And you can see how Rome still exists today. It was so bad uh, as far as how Rome has taken the Scripture and twisted it that you go back into history, and I know some of you teachers probably have taught this in, to your classes about Martin Luther nailing the 95 Theses onto the uh, Wittenberg Church. And, of course, this is beginning to mark the Protestant Reformation. Uh, and, and, and so we see a lot of things that come out of this. Now, when we look at this verse in verse 9, some believers look at this verse as referencing the tyranny of Rome. I think we kind of covered that. And they still, and that we still today face that same tyranny. Now, do you realize Rome may technically be in the books, kind of being, has fallen, but in reality, has it really fallen? Uh, because you think about. Uh, all the things that are still based with Rome. Now, there's another better understanding of what we're looking at here. Here's the second view of what we're seeing here, possibly. And that these seven mountains that John is talking about is not really seven mountains right there together that this woman sits upon, but is seven empires. Now, remember, mountains are powerful. They're they're humongous uh, landmarks, you know, in, in uh, geographical places around the world. And, and we see that mountains have been associated with, na uh, with nations in past when we look back in the Scripture. Uh, here, seven mountains or these hills uh, can also be representative of seven kingdoms or empires throughout time. Uh, so we can click that next slide. And these, and I know you can't see all of this here unless you got super eyesight, uh, but we see that throughout history there has been really seven great kind of empires that have taken place. The Egyptian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the uh, Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Now, those are only six empires, right? Well, the seventh is going to be the one of the Antichrist when he comes with his empire. Uh, not to say there's going to be that empire, but there's going to be kind of like a, a world regime that's already going to be on the scene during that time that he's going to take control of and unite it to make this world empire. And so 
when you think about what John's seen here, possibly he goes back to the book of Daniel again. You, you see these types of things. However, there could be a third theory that exists, and that these hills are symbolic for something else. Now, remember that Babylon, you remember the woman who's sitting on these hills? Now, this woman, she's an ideology. She's an influencer. And it's kind of funny that we say that word today. Uh, but she, she's an influencer in the world scheme of things. Uh, she has her hands in a lot of things. She's controlling this beast. What if these seven hills are not really empires or the seven hills that Rome sits on, but perhaps these things? Would you click the next slide? These, my friends, are also called the seven hills in modern times. Not from the Bible, but these are seven hills that are really being influenced today. Get where I'm going with this? Babylon's an influencer. Look at these seven mountains of the world. You have uh, arts and entertainment uh, that, of course, look at Hollywood today how corrupt and how much influence they have in the world today. I mean, you get all of these movie stars up there, and uh, they out there petitioning and, and rioting and protesting and all this kind of crazy nonsense. We see that. This is a big influencer in our world today. Uh, business. You know, a lot of businesses are tied up in a lot of things. It's very important as we as Christians know what we support, what businesses we support. You know, you don't want to go and support a business that's going to be practicing ungodly things, but yet many of us do unknowingly because of here is a great mountain in the world. Education. Uh, I, I'm so grateful for the teachers we have in our service. Uh, I wish there was teachers like y'all all over the world. Sadly, that's not the case. Uh, we're very blessed here in Johnston County to have a, 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 a good base of Christian teachers in our school. Not all of them are like that, but uh, we do have a strong base of them in the school system. But if you go outside of our county and to other states, uh, especially going out west, uh, the, you can see the corruption and, and how the education system has been influenced by Babylon. Okay, So we, we see that there's a lot of uh, 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 bad things being taught in the educational system. The family, of course, today is being attacked. June, for example, was a, a month about so-called pride. Uh, how sad that is. I, I hate to even turn on the radio to hear some of the advertisements and businesses and all the little emblems. And I couldn't even turn on my computer without it being broadcasted right there in my search bar. I mean, there it is. We're, the, the family is being influenced today by Babylon. Of course, our government is under the influence of Babylon. You know, it is sad today that you have, and, and again, I know that there's probably mixed feelings among some about the Roe v. Wade overturn, but I'll tell you my state, and, I, I, and, and I'll say I'm proud of it, I am pro-life. I believe that babies ought to live. I believe, and you're going to probably say I'm being too almost dictatorship, but I believe even if something happened to that woman, even if she was raped or incest, that baby didn't choose that. Why put that baby to death? If you don't want it, give it up for uh, adoption. Uh, don't put it to death. I don't believe murder is right. Now, I take a very strong stance on that. Uh, but we see today there we have... Our government who says, oh, it's a sad day in America when we overturned this. We've gone back 50 years. I want to slap some of them people sometimes. Uh, but, you know, why is our government like that? It has been influenced by Babylon. Media. Can you trust the news today? It's been influenced by Babylon. You get a twisted perspective. And sadly, even religion today. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am 
a modern traditionalist, I guess is a way, if that's a term, okay? I'm not full-blown contemporary, and I never will be. Amen. I won't be. And I won't be full old-school tradition either. I do believe that we church needs to adapt and to be able to cross barriers that separate groups that we can get people in who want to worship the Lord together. Uh, but we're seeing today that there's a big push, uh, and, and they're pushing out the lights, they're pushing out the Bible, and they're pushing out G- the message of Jesus and changing it with spin messages that make people feel all hyped up. We're seeing Babylon influence religion. Seven mountains that Babylon sits upon. Now, can you see that? Oh, when, I saw, when I came across that, I was like, man, that's, thank you, God. I mean, that's definitely, I can see that. Now, I give you that, and I say that some of these actually can be combined. It may not be that there's just one viewpoint on this, but there could be a combination of viewpoints on this, that we look at it and there's a blend. Now, let's go to verse 10, and I can help explain what I just said a little bit clearer. It says, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Now, we go back to one of the earlier theories where I talked about these being empires. Remember the seven empires of all of history, those main empires? Uh, Well, the empires were the rulers of the world. When they were in control, the world had to be obedient to what they said. And, and so uh, they are, these empires are representative here, as John is being explained to again by this angel, that are not just seven mountains, but are seven kings uh, that are here. And so these are rulers, these are laws that are being set forth. Now he tells us five of these empires have fallen. Again, we go back. Uh, you can click that next slide, brother. Uh, we, can, we can see that some of these empires have fallen. Egypt has fallen. Assyria has fallen. Babylon, Babylon has fallen. Greek has fallen. The Medo-Persians have fallen. Those five have all fallen. Now, at the time of the writing, Rome had not failed. And so you see that the, the, uh, when the angel tells John, and one is, Rome's still here. This one's still in control. So this had not come to pass yet. They had not faded away, and nor had they really faded away for, uh, in our modern times. Now, I know that sounds almost silly to say, but think about how Rome still influences our world today. I mean, it has impacted our world like none of its predecessors. Rome exists, of course, in art and architecture. We see buildings. We see roads. Even the amphitheaters all started because of Rome. Uh, Technology and science. Did you know Rome and the Romans were responsible and really uh, developed and and brought into the world irrigation? Uh, farming methods and things like that that we still use today. Uh, they weren't ignorant people. They had some great innovative, innovative ideas. Literature and language. Uh, think about how much that has impacted. How many when you were in high school had to read a little bit of Shakespeare or memorize a, a part of Shakespeare? All influenced directly from Rome because Shakespeare uh, read some of those influential poets. And, uh, and that helped shape our literature today. And of course, you think about our law, our government. Uh, our government today is based off a, 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 an example of Rome to a degree. I mean, you think about the Senate, Congress, even our courts all of that is based back from Rome, from the Rome, Roman Empire. And so, even though there's been a lot of changes in our times, and many think that Rome has fallen, if you really look at our world today, Rome really hasn't fallen. It still exists. Now, when we see this, and we think about uh, what the angel is, being, uh, is telling John here, there's another way to look at this. 
And, uh, and this, again, goes back to my theory section again. And I hate to sound like I'm uh, bringing out all these theories, but I think it's really good to give our minds a way of working and thinking about this. So another way of looking at this is what the angel is saying. Is, 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 and remember, he's talking to John. John would know that the empire of his time was Rome, and at that time, even if Rome had, has fallen, uh, what the angel says, of course, is still correct, but he could be referring to something else that is yet still in the world today, an empire that we don't really realize, and that is the reemergence of the seventh empire, and that being America. You don't think about America being an empire, do you? Brother, would you click the next slide? This map, and if you're colorblind, I apologize. It's going to be probably hard for you to see. But the darker shades of blue, and there's some lighter shades of blue, and then there's some orange. These are all places that are, uh, are influenced by America today. Uh we have some kind of influence in those lands. Now, this is not talking about military. This is like economic influence. You know, things like uh, we have uh, a lot of our imperialism, a lot of our methods are brought to these places in the world, and, and they adopt some of the things that we do. So we are influencing these places uh, in reality, if you think about it, there's, this, is really, this map really lacks a lot of that because we really influence much of the world today with our economy, with our goods, uh, with just everything that we do here in this world. Even like with our media and culture, a lot of our things spread across the world. And so the United States today has really gone beyond its borders into taking in places now that it adopts into its uh, in empire, so to speak. Now, click the next slide. You see all that red? There's only a few places that are white. Red, there's going to be colors of red, dark red, and red with some lines in it. These are nations today that either have American presence in it by military troops, military bases, uh, uh, or uh, uh, let's see, what's the other thing? I, I forget that was on there. Uh, military bases, military troops, uh, and uh, of course the ones with the lines. This was when we invaded, of course, Afghanistan in that region of the world after 2001, after the terrorist attacks. So we're all over the world. Uh, we are a very powerful military. Uh, and so when you think about this, this is exactly how the empires of ancient times were. They put their military presence around, and you have an empire. And so what John perhaps is seeing here then is the American empire. Now, there's a quote, a few quotes that I want to give to you. One of them uh, from a historian named Richard Emmerman. He said, America is and always has been an empire. Another historian said, the existence of the American empire is an undeniable fact. I mean, we don't think of it like that. We're not going out there to conquer worlds and nations and things like that. But in reality, we kind of are. So perhaps what the angel tells John here with this empire that he sees that is, uh, that, that is, is perhaps us today. Maybe we're that Rome, that Babylon Rome, so to speak, uh, that influences the world, that people hate. Now, obviously, a lot of the people in the world does hate America, uh, and we still continue to force our wills upon them. And so... Maybe this is what John is witnessing. Now, if you click the next slide, another way to view this is that, of course, is that there's going to be a new empire that comes towards the latter times. Now, think of it like this, where it says here in verse 11, we're kind of skipping ahead some, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Okay, so what does this mean? 
Well, it means when we have, of course, the original six all the way to Rome, there's this new empire in the world. That's America. America, let's just, let's just theorize, say America falls out of the remnants of the fallen America that has devastated because of its fall to the world. The Antichrist forms together a new empire or a new regime, a world power, so to speak, that comes onto the scene, and he is that eighth that we talk about. Now, there's a lot of ways to view this, but here is possibly a, a way of viewing what we're seeing here. And so when John gives us this verse, we can see that what we're seeing here is there's symbolic empires, uh, but there's also these influencers that are out there as well that can all tie together. Now, I know you're saying that has gone above my head, brother. Everything you just said is so confusing. Well, that's why we'll just have to keep studying the book of Revelation until we get it. <laughs> but now we come into verse 11. You know what? 11, 12, 13. I'll tell you what. We're going to just, it's 825. And that, that section has got a little bit of good meat there that we, need, we can pluck off that bone and savor next week. So we're going to finish up a little early tonight. Um, and we'll come back next week to pick up. Sound good? All right. This gives us some time. If anybody has any questions, I might can help explain or clear up if you're a little bit confused on any of this. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to ask it at this time. Okay, nobody's got any questions. Praise the Lord. Good job, Eric. No. <laughs> Don't give you a test. <laughs> when I used to teach at the seminary, I quizzed them every week. They hated me. Every week. But, hey, only way you can learn sometimes. What do I think as far as the seven heads? Me, personally, I, I lean to the influencer aspect of it. I mean, these, are, these seven areas do greatly impact the world. They are controlled, uh, I believe, by a Babylon. Uh, but I, I'm not going to rule out that this is not, you know, the seven empire. I, I don't really believe that it's going to be Rome. Again, I don't believe it's going to be those seven hills of Rome. Now, for John to understand it and for the churches of that day to understand it, they could look at Rome. They could see that. Uh, but I think for us, God already pre-thought this, that it had a little bit more than just that this is Rome. Uh, it had a little bit more than that, and that I believe it's these empires and these influencers. It's kind of like a combination. That's my, my, my opinion. Brother Gordon, you had one? Yeah, the new world order that is supposed to come, and it's even talked about even in our time right now, uh, I believe is possibly that empire that's going to come, uh, and that will be seized control of by the Antichrist. Uh, the groundwork's got to be laid for it, because, you know, he's not going to be able just to come on the scene. I don't really think he's going to be that sly. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna all unite. There's there's got to be a lot of groundwork laid out, uh, a lot of politics already put in place, where he can pull these strings together and bring that about. Uh, I do believe that new world order is going to come, and we'll see it. But uh, it well, we'll see it from heaven, I believe. But uh, but yeah, I think that's that antichrist and empire. All right, well, going once, twice. All right, let's go ahead then. We'll close that with a word of prayer. Thank you for the questions. Anytime you have a question, don't ever be scared to ask. Somebody else may have that same question. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you now for this blessed opportunity to be able to gather tonight. Uh, Lord, we weren't able to cover everything that we wanted to, but, Lord, we we're anticipating our next study. And I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to excite us as we 
continue to read this book and, and learn more about it and see the possible ways that you're going to do this. Lord, we will never know exactly how it will all unfold. You only know that. And, but, Lord, we pray that we are on a right perspective and understanding of this great book. And so, Lord, I pray that if we do have questions and confusion, that your Holy Spirit will enlighten us to understand what we do read. Lord, we cannot put trust in man and his explanation. We put our trust in you and that you enlighten us and help us to grasp the meaning of this wonderful book. Lord, as we depart tonight, we do pray for our prayer requests. We pray specifically for Jennifer and her white blood cell count. That it get, get that up, Lord. We know you can do that. Uh, Lord, just go ahead and work that miracle right now. We're trusting you in that. We're also trusting you for all the other things that were uh, brought to our attention, Lord, and the, the needs that are on our hearts. And I pray that even if we can't remember them all, the ones that we can remember, that we'll pray for them. Uh, Lord, with all of us here, we're going to lift them, them prayer requests right up to you, and we ask that you move upon them. Lord, we do pray for the rain. We praise your name right now that it's thundering out there. And, Lord, we just pray that this is not just a noisy storm, but it is a storm that brings the blessing of rain and water to our lands. We need that, Lord. And, Lord, we're just going to continue to be a blessing for you by going out there and serving you. So, Lord, as we go out there into this world, it's a frightful world. It's dark. There's a lot of evil that takes place. I pray, Lord, give the people here the courage boldness and strength that they can be that faithful witness especially in these last days that we're living in put a hedge of protection around them lord as we pray for us so often and keep them safe lord we're just going to continue to praise you and glorify your name and we look forward to where we can come back on sunday and worship you once again but lord we're looking forward to even more to the day you call us home and lord we pray that be soon lord we thank you again for what you do for us uh, be with us tonight. Lead God and direct us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you folks.